Jesus said to his disciples, You have heard it said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies, and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your heavenly Father. For he makes the sun rise on the bad and the good, and causes rain to fall on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what recompense will you have? Do not tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brothers and sisters only, what unusual about that? Do not pagans do the same? So be perfect, just as your Heavenly Father is perfect. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. One of the saints said that silence is the language of heaven. Silence is the language of heaven. Just think about it. In the Carmelite community, to meditation, to contemplative prayer. But it is extremely hard without silence. And I don't mean just the silence during the time that we're meditating. That nobody rattled the rosary or banged the door or dropped the kneeler or the you know. That's just that time. If we were to go the extent of it, we would not talk in time to get up on Saturday morning. We would just give a pleasant smile and nod to our spouse to our kids, they would understand she's not going to talk. She's not going to say a word. Nothing's going to come out of her mouth. And all the way over here, no music, no radio, no iPad, no nothing. No telephone, absolutely nothing. Just the sound of the car. And arriving here, we wouldn't say a word. We'd either keep our eyes down or we would greet one another with a, that's it. Not a sound. And then we would come in here, and we might get a piece of paper coming in the door with some quote from one of our fathers, one of our Carmelite saints, or another, or a scripture. And that's the content of our meditation for that day. And then for an hour at least, there would be total, complete silence, and just letting that word wash over our soul. That would be fruitful. Not very practical. <laughs> but I wanted to take it to an extreme to understand what I'm trying to say. There are two pieces to our comprehending God. One, of course, is our brain. And there's no on and off switch. It's just permanently on. And when it stops, we die. I mean, that's it. Oh, I sleep. Yes, you sleep, but your brain's still cooking, isn't it? <laughs> and you're rehearsing things from the previous day or past or this idling or there's a dream that might have some prophetic value to it or whatever. But it never stops. It's always switched on. You don't have to do anything to switch it on. But the soul, the deep center of you, your heart, that part where God speaks in contemplative prayer, that's not switched on all the time. Other things crowded up, like sound, like words, even music, they crowded up. And that's what stays dormant. And so I wrote down a few things that helped turn it on. And the very first one, guess what is silence? <laughs> when I went on my retreat, I had problems with altitude. Attitude, maybe. 
<laughs> um, how to do. So once I get depressed that I'm okay when I'm terrible at uh, you know, flight stuff. My nose bleeds, I get headaches, I can't breathe, I lay down, I can't breathe. So I don't go with the priest every year to flight staff uh, for our annual priest retreat. Which I miss because I went once, I went twice, the second time I had to come home. But we have to make an annual retreat. So I decided, okay, I was born on the feast of St. Ignatius Loyola. But the Jesuit by osmosis. <laughs> so, so I had never done a Jesuit retreat, so I thought to myself, okay, I'm going to go. So I went to Los Altos, California, which is in the Bay Area, so every morning the fog rolled in. You could see the fog in, in, out the dining room window. And it was very nice. It's in a little forest up on the side of the hill. The Jesuits always know how to pick those spots. <laughs> and you have the money to do and, uh, so when I got there on um, Friday afternoon, uh, I decided I was going to have a silent retreat. That's what I asked for. Silent retreat with half an hour of spiritual direction each day. My spiritual director was a Jesuit priest uh, from South Africa. He was Dutch, South African. He was absolutely wonderful. It's the best retreat I've had in my entire life. <coughs> And I think it was the silence that started them off to make it the best. I didn't say a word to anyone. There was another priest, two priests, and a nun, who were making silent retreats also. We had our own table in the dining room, little sign, silent retreatants. We would come to the dining room, we would greet each other with a smile, just like that. That's it. We weren't cold and like we're in a world of our own. We did that, but that's all. There was no past to solve, there was nothing like that, it was just silent. And that night, silence. And I had a hard time getting into that because my head was still going busy with things I had to do and get back, and you know, all those things that our brain, which doesn't switch on, does. And then, the next morning, when I went to eat breakfast, the silence was really nice. I mean, it was beginning to settle in. At 9.30, I went to my spiritual director, and the first words out of his mouth were, what do you want to get out of this retreat? And I told him. I didn't have to think for a moment. And then he, he said, hmm. and then he said, I have two passages for you from scripture. And he told me what they were. And he said, go and three times at least, if not more. Read each one and think about it. And I did that. And the first reading was kind of, I just read it. But the second and third times during the day, it got deeper, I got more silent. And it was almost like Jesus was there and he was helping me understand some things about these passages that really related to me. Something was opening, a switch had been clicked, and something was there that wasn't there before. I guess that's the best way to describe it. And so I went back the next day, and he said, what was your experience? So I told him. And then he reflected some things back to me. One of them was the part of the sun. And after we talked a little bit about it, and I told him what my reflections were going to he said, Father, have you ever considered, this is the only thing you said that was directed, Father, have you ever considered that God's will for you is that you become like the Father in the prodigal son story? It never occurred to me. <laughs> but that was exactly right. It was, I mean, it was just exactly right. Which, of course, gave me Father for the, the next day. Then he gave me two more passages, and this thing went on uh, for the days that I was there. So the first, I think the first requirement to turn on this switch is silence. And enough of it to get everything else quiet. I think the second thing is to have a clean heart. 
I don't just mean by the confession. I think it takes a heart that's watchful against the intrusion of the enemy's thoughts and a heart that prays. Uh, hopefully continual prayer. So that the mind is never open and idle and just like a big sponge absorbing everything that comes past it. That could be done with the Jesus prayer, could be done with the rosary, could be done with the Russian rosary, which I'll mention at the end, because you might like to look at that for a lens. But it could be done with a short, short phrase, some way to keep your attention on God. And I think it's really helpful. Confession is important, yes, but it doesn't take the place of practice of the every moment practice of keeping watch over what you're thinking. That, is, that, that tells God you're serious. You can go to confession once a week, how long does that take? 10 minutes? That's no big thing out of your life. But if every moment you're saying no to an enemy's thoughts and he plants there, you're just not going to hear it. Oh, look at that. No, I'm not going to do that. No, I know where that's coming from. That's the practice of a clean heart. That's far more than 10 minutes of confession. Do you understand what I'm saying? Grace comes from both. It comes to both. So I think having a heart that God sees as really wanting to prepare a temple here is a second requirement for really good switching on of the contemplative moments. Then I think we have to have an object. It can be a reading from the scripture, such as I was given on retreat. It can be a reading from one of the saints. I use that a lot. Readings from John of the Cross, from Perez, from Teresa, her mother. Readings from St. Sarah from Masara. Readings from Isaac of Syria. I love I love all these good ones. So I read ten of those. I don't take long paragraphs. Just a few lines. And just read them. Mm. And then that becomes the subject of my, my time of quiet. I don't have the phone on. It's off, it's not gonna ring. It's quiet in the house and kids are raising on. The only thing I'll hear is my birds upstairs. So I think that's a requirement. Of course, the grace of the Holy Spirit, which you know. It helps not to have had a cup of really heavy caffeine coffee. <laughs> and it does, because it will wire you a little bit. And make sure that you don't, if you want to have a quieter time, that you don't caffeine up if, when you're going to meditate. You should keep that at another time. It really helps not to have a full stomach. You don't want to be hungry, but not to have a stomach where all the blood your body is rushing there to carry the nutrients around and it comes out of your brain and then... <laughs> so those are, I hope that's helpful. And I wanted to tell you, just in, in closing, something you can do um, during Lent. If you want a variety of prayer during Lent, there's a wonderful, wonderful rosary it's called the Russian rosary. Um, it was developed in the 8th century around the 150 um, angelic salutations. That they only do the Lord's Prayer once, that's the beginning. The only direction is not the creed, all the rest of the Lord's Prayer, just the Lord's Prayer. Then a prayer, open to us the doors of mercy, O Mother of God, is a good New Orthodox prayer. And then they go right into the 15, and you do all 15, not five and all 15. And there's no Lord's Prayer at the beginning of each one. You just say, let us remember, or let me, Lord help me remember, the birth of the Mother of God. That's the first one. The birth of the Mother of God. And then you do ten angelic salutations, Russian style. This was, re re was renewed by Seraphim Osarov in the 19th century. And he taught it to all of the children he directed, all the people he directed. And he told them, you do this, and God will open the doors of his mercy to you and graces that you never thought would come do. Of course, I love seraphim. And then there's no glory at the end. You just go right into, let us remember, 
the presentation of the baby of the little girl Mary in the temple. And then Tim, and it goes this way. Uh, Hail Mother of God, Virgin Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, for you gave birth to Christ, the Savior and Redeemer of our souls. Very nice. Yeah. And then the third one is, let us remember, uh, the Annunciation. The fourth, let us remember the visit to righteous Elizabeth. And then the fifth, let us remember the birth of Jesus. The sixth, let us remember the presentation of the child Jesus in the temple. Then let us remember the flight into Egypt. These are all Marian flight into Egypt. Then let us remember the finding of the child of Jesus in the temple. Then let us remember Jesus' first miracle at his mother's request at Canaan. And then let us remember the mother of God, a sword piercing her heart, standing at the foot of the cross. And then the five ending ones are the ones we use all the time in our rosary. You can find that if you go to the internet look up the rule of the Ataka, so the rule of the Mother of God, the rule of the Mother of God, named the prayer rule of Seraphim Masara, which is the rule of the Mother of God, will find it for you. There's a short version, and there's a long version of prayers and everything else, but it's a big nice one. Let us pray.